Hello, you're watching New Stock Markets. Energy has been the most talked about sector this year. We've heard much about how the slide in oil prices and worries about China have hit commodities and natural resources stocks. Keep an eye too on oil field services companies. In the short term, oil and gas majors are slashing spending and that's had a big impact. But in the long term, as oil and gas production increases, the market for oil field services is expected to grow. So what should investors be looking for in the services space? I'm joined now by Chris Boxall, Manager of Fundamental Energy Fund, which invests in the key providers of equipment and services to the energy space. He's also Lead Manager of Fundamental Asset Management's AIM Portfolio Service. Thanks ever so much for coming in. Now, Thank what you. are the big factors here to consider? What's going on? Well, clearly, clearly oil price and production in the US. And when we talk about US production, US production has been ramping up over the last few years. But what should we be looking at now? I think the key things to look at in the US is the rig count, the falling US rig count. The rig count's now down massively. This is the number of rigs, drilling rigs, operating in the onshore of the United States. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a metric provided by Baker Hughes for the for a long, long time, but we're due to see the, the next number shortly. It's produced weekly. We want to see a falling rig count. We want to see U.S. production slowing and tailing off a little bit. That's the key, because the U.S. production is not economic below a certain oil price, and you've got a lot of very small producers out there that are going to be, you know, feeling it at the moment. Well, let's talk about some of those small producers. What, what are the implications? Well, they can't. For oil around $50 a barrel or sub $50 a barrel it's just not economic you've got little producers that the so-called stripper wells crazy name but the stripper wells they're producing one or two you know 20 barrels whatever very a small quantity they were only economic at much higher oil prices they still represent a good chunk of US production so get rid of those you can get rid of all the marginal producers and you're starting to to come down to a much better balanced market I, th I think hopefully we're not far off that. You, you say get rid of them. Are you talking about M&A? Is it a no, waiting I, game well, for the I, minnows sorry, to, to, to go be, out of production? To be, to, to be more exact, get rid of them in the sack that, you know... That, out of they, your they, portfolio. They, well, they're not in my portfolio, <laughs> thankfully. But uh, they, the, there is no reason to, for them to be producing when they're not making any money. Uh, and the, it must be marginal now. So if, if it's not economic for them, they, they can s simply wait their time, I mean, buy their time and, and remain out of the market. So they're, not, they're not a major factor globally, but they do make up the margin on the US. So if you strip them out, excuse the pun, there, are, there, are, there is a greater opportunity for, for balance to return into the market, in my opinion. So investors are looking for clues on how to play this. What, which company would, would be a shining example? I think a shining example of Schlumberger. They're the biggest of the lot. They've got great technology. They virtually are, they are an oil and gas company. They're running the, the majors. They've got everything. And they've, they've made the first moves. They've made, the, they've made a move, well, it's the second move for them, a big acquisition of Cameron, which is another big engineering group. It was at a huge premium to the share price just before, just before the, the, it was announced. And Schlumberger is in a great position. It's got great cash flow. It delivers big operating margins. It's, it's the capital markets are still open to it. It's got a very strong balance sheet. So it will be looking for the key technologies, the key providers, and if the opportunity arises, we'll, we'll want to either form alliances with them or acquire them, in my opinion. So that's the shining example. Is yeah. there a company where lessons can be learned? I think lessons can be learned in the smaller cap arena in the UK is a little business called Sea Energy. It's been a complete disaster. It, um, it's very, very tiny now. It was much, well, a lot bigger a few years ago. It uh, exited some other assets. It raised a lot of cash. It spent, its, it spent all its cash. It's left with a, a, a pretty ordinary offering now, and it's got no cash. The key thing for any service provider, any, any business really, when the bad times come, you, you, you've got to have some rainy day money, and perhaps quite a lot of it. Sea Energy doesn't have any rainy day money. So, where so can not, it not, not a buying opportunity at the price it's at, one well, to stick. People will be off. looking at it and thinking, wow, this is an opportunity. What's left? You know, it may look at it, it may, people may think, but I'm not so sure. Okay, then, what, what's your outlook? 
outlook for the oil services sector itself is I think the, the big and the strong, the cash rich, will do really, really well out of this, really well. Whereas the small, the, the, those with weak balance sheets, with, with not really much of a technology offering, nothing really different are going to struggle. And in that category, I would say the onshore drillers will struggle, the offshore drillers are going to struggle, huge shakeout. So stick to big, strong companies that are at the heart of the sector and they should do really, really nicely over the next few years. So the opportunity is with those big, solid players. I believe it. Yeah. Well, Chris Boxhill, thanks ever so much for coming in. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.